the how and why of calf castration. Please note, this video contains images of calf castration techniques which may not be appropriate for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Castration is the process of removing the testicles from male calves and is a common practice on nearly all beef operations. A castrated bull is called a steer. It is best to castrate calves at a younger age. Beef quality assurance guidelines recommend castration by 90 days of age. Older or bigger calves may be subject to excessive bleeding or other complications during castration. There are several benefits to raising steers rather than bulls. Steers are usually less aggressive than bulls since they no longer have the testicles to produce testosterone. Castration of your bull calves will also result in less wear and tear on equipment, fences, and often people. And beef from a steer is more tender and has a more desirable flavor as well. It will also ensure that you have no surprise pregnancies in your herd. Steers also bring more money at the sale than bull calves. Regardless of if you are using a calf table or roping and dragging calves in the pen, this is the equipment needed to safely castrate calves. First, a sharp clean knife is a must regardless of whether you are using emasculators or a knife to castrate. You will need either chlorhexidine or at least 70% alcohol in a small container to sanitize your tools between the animals. Finally, you should have an antiseptic wound spray that is approved for use on food animals, for example, wound coat. Before you start, be sure that the calf has both testicles descended. If not, you may want to talk to your veterinarian before castrating that calf. The first technique uses only a sharp knife to remove the testicle. First, restrain the calf and check to be sure both testicles are fully descended into the scrotum. Use the sharp knife to cut off the bottom or tip of the scrotum. Pull one testicle out and down, pushing the membranes back up towards the calf until the spermatic cord is exposed and you can be sure that you are removing all of the testicular tissues. As you pull the testicle down, keep pushing the membranes up and pull that spermatic cord out to stretch and close off the blood vessels. Use your sharp knife to cut the spermatic cord as close to the scrotum as possible. Repeat this for the second testicle. Next, trim any fatty tissue hanging out of the scrotal sac and spray with wound spray. Keep an eye out for any fat or other tissue hanging from the incision. Also, observe these castrated calves for at least 15 minutes to make sure there's no excessive bleeding. And keep an eye on those calves for the next few days for any complications, such as excess swelling. The second technique includes the use of an emasculator. This tool is designed to cut the spermatic cord on the testicular side and crimp the cord and stop the blood supply on the calf side at the same time. This reduces the incidence of bleeding. So as before, restrain the calf and check to be sure that both testicles are fully descended into the scrotum. Use the sharp knife to cut off the tip of the scrotum. Pull one testicle out and down, pushing the membranes back up towards the scrotum until the spermatic cord is exposed, and you can be sure that you're removing all of the testicular tissues. Place the emasculator over the cord, nut side out, that means crimping side towards the calf, and squeeze to cut the spermatic cord. Hold pressure for about 15 seconds or longer for larger calves, before releasing the emasculator to ensure that you've closed off the blood vessels. Repeat this for the second testicle. 
trim any fatty tissue hanging out of the scrotal sac and then spray with the wound spray. Know your testicle. If you look closely, you can kind of see through the covering the slight pinkish area here. That is the head of the epididymis that we have to make sure that we get completely when castrating to remove the source of the hormone supply. Let's cut away the outer lining or the vaginal tunic to get a little closer look inside of the testicle. Now as we squeeze this and pull the vaginal tunic off and turn this a little bit inside out so we can look at the inner structures, you can actually see that this right here is the vas deferens, which is the blood supply. And this is part of the whole structure, which is the spermatic cord, which holds the vas deferens and also the epididymis, which is the curly like structure that you can see here, especially when it's flipped over on the other side. The epididymis carries the sperm, which as you can see goes down to the tail of the epididymis, which is right at the bottom of the scrotum. Next, you can see the body of the testi, and the head of the epididymis is right at the top. It is critical to make sure that you get rid of all of the testicular tissue and above the head of the epididymis in order to make sure they have been cut clean. And as you can see, there was plenty of tissue left on this testicle. To show you the other way close up, we would be doing the same thing only with emasculators. You need to place them above the head of the epididymis and to help you remember, always have nut to nut to make sure that you have the nut of the tool pointing to the calf's nut or testicle because the testy side of the tool cuts with a sharp blade while the other side crimps to shut off the blood flow and prevent bleeding. So when we squeeze the tool, it cuts and crimps. The testy is cut off, but the blood supply still attached to the calf is crimped and held tight until you release it to stop the bleeding. If you have any questions about this, contact your local veterinarian, your county livestock extension agent, which you can find at extension.arizona.edu slash locations, or contact the University of Arizona Livestock Extension Specialist, Dr. Joslyn Beard, at the email and phone numbers provided on the screen. We wish to extend a special thanks to the Tank Ranch in Safford, Arizona, and to the veterinarian and other volunteers who helped with this video.